you for joining us again on another episode of uh, Let's Talk About That. Is that the whole title? No. It's <laughs> 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 no, but there was something you wanted to talk about, Tanya, that you wanted to bring up and ask. Let's start with Carla. Food? Was it? Yes. Are we talking about food? Let's go talk about food. What is your... Okay, my question then, because we said we were going to come up with questions about food. What is your go-to comfort food? Because we all lived abroad. Yes. So there's a time where, okay, you can only eat so much like salad or potatoes or meat or wherever you're living. And you need something to kind of reconnect mm-hmm. with who you are. I always said like I needed rice at least every two weeks mm-hmm. um, to, to really like feed my soul as yeah. well as my body just to like remind myself. So I think my comfort food would have been adobo and if I was chaga enough to make lumpia mm. like yeah. that's involved especially if you're doing everything and you have to clean but up and you have briefly to fry briefly describe for our listeners let's hope there are some <laughs> what adobo is oh, what really? is adobo oh, okay. uh. no, just to you know so adobo is like there the are a lot food of, of the moment yes and the Philippine national dish for the most part I would think although we have different regions but for the most part it's a combination of a meat, whether a protein, whether that is chicken or and pork or pork. Sometimes Even people goat. do seafood or goat. And then, sorry, <laughs> there's like a mix mm-hmm. of like vinegar, bay leaf, um, peppercorns, and soy sauce sometimes or or fish, fish, fish sauce, sauce, which is patis really? sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Or even I bagoong, fermented shrimp paste. Yeah. Yeah. There's fr- really? Yeah. Or, and it has gata in the south. Yeah. They, put, they put coconut, coconut cream, milk. coconut oh. milk. And it's really good. I've tried it with gata, the finishing. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. It's mm-hmm. really good. It's so a little more rich. Mm-hmm. The one I do is, and it's modified from our friend JJ, who kind of like showed me his recipe. So the one I do is a brief rundown. It's like I brown, and people do it in different ways, but the combination of that is adobo. But for me, I'll brown the chicken first, then all the font, fra- fond? Fond. Mm-hmm. fond at the bottom, which is all the crispy stuff at the bottom mm-hmm, of the mm-hmm. pan. I'll saute the garlic in that because there's chicken fat there as well. Mm-hmm. And then you put the chicken back, or for me, I only did chicken. I didn't really want to do pork. Then I would put the vinegar to deglaze the pan mm-hmm. and then let that simmer. And then add maybe some water or some broth and then finish it with some... I put salt and pepper and like pep, like a lot of pepper in the bay leaf. Mm-hmm. And then finish it with some soy sauce for the color. Yeah. Oh. So and that was always... Even my grandmother, when she was living in New York, when she was working at the UN, it was almost like her introduction to Filipino food when she'd have people over to her apartment. Right, right. It was adobo and lumpia. So mm-hmm. for me, and it's vegetable lumpia, which is like spring rolls with like... Green sprouts, bean sprouts, and like and green beans carrots. and carrots, and some pork. Actually, funny you should mention adobo. It reminds me of a story. I was uh, visiting a friend in who was st- I was studying in London, and my friend was studying in Italy. Mm-hmm. In uh, he was in Florence, and I had gone to visit him for a, a few days, um, one 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 month that we were there together in Europe, and. Uh, he introduced me to all his friends, and they were all of different nationalities. He was living in a flat with a, you know, a Greek guy, a Swedish guy, and an Englishman. Um, and and he, you know, he said, "Hey, uh, we'll have a party as a going away for you, you know." And I, I promised my friends some Filipino food. This is what he tells me: I promised my friends some Filipino food. And when he said friends, I expected, you know, just the three other guys that he was mm-hmm. living with and the people he had introduced me to. So I said, oh, okay, great. And this is what he tells me before he goes to school. Because he was going to school for the day, and I was like going to wander around Florence on my own to see it, and then I figured we'd meet back uh, at the flat afterwards. And he says, meet me at the grocery on mm-hmm. the corner of his school, um, you know, right after I'm done. It's at this time. So I said, okay, sure. But so this I wandered. Guy Filipino? Yes, this okay. guy is Filipino. So he's like, that's why he said, I promised my friends Filipino, Filipino food. food. Um, you know, and they're going to be at the house at this time and da 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 so meet me in the grocery. So I said, okay, great. Wandered around Florence, met him at the grocery afterwards, I grabbed the cart, we go into the grocery, and I'm, I'm waiting for him uh-huh. to tell me what to get, right? Because right? he tells me we're, there's going to be Filipino food. I am presuming <laughs> he's making it. <laughs> he, on the other hand, is presuming I am I... making something. And so I go in and I'm like, well, what are we buying first? And he said, I don't know. What goes into adobo? Assuming. And I said, <laughs> and I, like said I don't know. Exactly. I said, I don't know what does go into adobo. And he says, well, I have no idea. He, and what? he goes, I presumed you knew. 
being, he's like, I presumed you would know how to make it. Because you're a girl? I, I didn't ask, maybe. And I just, of course, no, this is, it was funny because he said, I said, why would you presume that? Why would you presume I would know how to make adobo? Mm-hmm. And he said, somewhere in your childhood, you must have spent time in the kitchen and seen <gasps> somebody make oh. adobo. No, no, he didn't mean it like that. It was, <laughs> there was okay. a lot of cooking that did mm. go on in my house. My mother cooked a right. lot. But, you know, just because my mother cooked a lot did not mean, mean I was particularly you know. paying attention still kind to what of she was like making. That. But I'm not kidding. So we were panicking because he was like, I have people coming to the house. We have no food. <laughs> so we literally had, I stopped because it's Italy. And I figured there's got to be another Filipino here yeah. somewhere. Mm-hmm. True enough. Yeah, we right. spotted yeah. a few and I accosted them and mm-hmm. went, I'm really sorry. This sounds weird. But could me? you please tell me how to make adobo? <laughs> and so in the middle of a grocery in Florence, this nice Filipina lady taught me how to make adobo. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're writing everything down. These were the days before cell phones. So it's yeah. not like we could have just recorded her. So we're taking everything down, got all the ingredients. Not only did we make adobo, we also made pancit. Wow. <laughs> yeah. With only two pans, because my friend only has, has two, two pans, pans in the entire apartment, <gasps> and we fed 20 people. Oh my gosh. Oh. Because so it I, wasn't just the three it people? It wasn't just the three guys, because it spread that there was a party with uh, exotic food. Uh, exotic. Lord. Yeah, that's what and they were called. Yeah. It, it, they wiped it out, and were they thrilled? Because mm-hmm. the secret ingredient, which I realized later on, the, the flavor they really loved oh, was yeah. soy sauce. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Because this was... This was a long time ago. This was like yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. Asian food was not a big yeah. thing yet. You know, in Europe, particularly not in Florence, mm-hmm, right. and they were very fascinated mm-hmm. at this dark, tangy yeah. thing. Taste, that yeah, they, yeah mm-hmm. they loved it. So that's how I kind of learned what was in adobo. But then I realized that every family has a different yeah. way of making yeah. it. Mm, yeah, yeah, and every even in every region, every di- every house on the street would have a different version. So your family version is like how, Carl's? Super sour, really sour, and what Lots kind of, of vinegar? Just like the natural cane vinegar, mm. nothing special, but a lot of vinegar, and the soy sauce would only come at the very, very end. It, I've learned it's really better just for yeah. coloring because Color. when I used to like try to make it before very, and you do it end. early, it's just too It'll salty. It'll sal- oh. be salty and tough. But have you found that people have become more curious about? Um, what they eat or in fact trying different types of food because of the internet because of what we see now yeah. online yeah. I mean you've got the reality cooking shows mm-hmm. but you've also got like the photo sharing sites and yeah. The, yeah. the video sites and everybody talking about mixing this and mixing that and there seems to be a lot of fusion cuisine mm-hmm. I feel like that I remember because I think we were we were in the states at the at time still and you were probably in London where all the food shows came out Yes. So I think before even people could share on their phones and on the internet, the food shows were already like, you know, there were travel shows or food shows just showing people like how to eat different things, how that's to make true. different yeah, things. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. I remember you could just that. watch it like the whole day and then there's the food network where you're basically watching it. You could watch it 24 7. I remember one of the biggest shows in the UK at the time uh, was a show called The Two Fat Ladies. Yeah, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. The Two Fat Ladies who basically drove around in a trike. Uh, and went to, yeah, they, you know, Sidecar. bless them. Yeah, mm. l- 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 and and they just cooked the most fatty foods yeah. while smoking mm-hmm. and drinking. Funny. And by Super the end funny. of the program, they were completely drunk. Super <laughs> funny. They were but so it was funny. they were brilliant. They yeah. were so Super deadpan funny. and dry. And yeah, I mean, it was yeah. more than just Julia Child. Yeah. Speaking yes. of cooking while well drunk, when Tanya and I were roommates, like I would help her twice. There were two instances we had. She had a an, a, a muscle party in your. Small muscle? Enough. You had muscles. Oh, muscles. Yeah. I thought like Okay, I was thinking muscle, muscle party? Like, like muscle, muscle beach? Yeah. Like oh, Venice yeah. Beach, but this California. Was, but this was before we before were roommates. We were so I M-U-S-S. lived in a studio apartment in LA. It was mm-hmm. kind of, the place kind of looked like Melrose Place. Literally, yeah, like Melrose Place. Ooh, a separate, I remember that place. Yeah, you yeah. stayed there too. Like, um, like there was like place. a kitchen and then just basically one room. Mm-hmm. Right. And then for it's some reason I... Actually, this is the thing. When you live abroad, it's good to invite people over because it forces you to clean up your apartment. Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That so, is true. Yeah. So then we made mussels. I don't, where did I get those mussels? You had mussels. Somehow I got I mean, mussels. Yeah. There were two pots of mussels. One was red, one was white. Yes. Wow. Yeah. She had 12 people in her apartment. Is that when I we made pasta? There no. was pasta. There was salad. But I just remember the mussels, just making mussels. And like the, the usual like two pots. Tana didn't have two pots. She had like three. I, but <laughs> I had one stock pot. 
And then I had like I had these pots when I bought them when I was living in New York, and then I mm-hmm. when I brought them to LA. And I my my own, my best memory of that was I'm just like okay, this is a really tight spot, and it's a really tight. Like there's re- literally no dining room. Yeah. But she made a dining room out of her thing. <laughs> Twelve people sat down wow. and had the time of their that lives. Was fun. And right. I was just like, this there is was a what lot of wine. it was all about. <laughs> Like the reason why we she decided to have a party was just to have people come over and and eat. Yeah. And then another thing happened when we were roommates already. And then I cooked Thanksgiving dinner. <gasps> it was amazing. And then I cooked like I don't know five courses or something. Wow. And I didn't know how I did it, but I did. I it don't know how end. she did it either. And I couldn't really help her. I tried, but she but had I was like, like, no, don't do it. Because she had her system. Yeah. Right. So I was just watching in awe. But at the end of the night. What was most fun is when we were cleaning up. Yeah, but it's definitely a very Filipino thing, though, yeah. to to socialize with food. Yeah. Yeah. anywhere you go, even in the you know, yeah. you go to the most rural of areas. Even the people who who might not have that much to share will share with you the yes. meal. And the first question is not even "Hello, how are you?" It's "Have you eaten?" Have you eaten? Right. Yeah, yeah. So I like that. And so and you're saying when we were cleaning when up. when we were cleaning up, we were drunk. Yes, and <laughs> I remember we were drunk. We were just washing all the dishes. Washed every single piece of. We equipment. dried it too. We didn't just leave it. We dried we it. We dried it. We put everything back where it right. belonged. We mopped the floor. Yeah. We cleaned the floor. We're like, it's like it never happened. It's like it never wow. happened. But then it was just I such a high. Place. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody, we all invited um, the, um, the. It was Thanksgiving, so we all invited um, orphans, right? People who had no yes. family. Yeah. Because right. it's a big holiday in the U.S. Yes. yes. And you know we didn't have like. And motley crew. Yeah. Like. My friends, her friends. Yeah, just like a friends. combo. But yeah, it worked it, out so well. So well. One of the best memories. See, we had that, that once in, in London. when I, I was there for Christmas. Uh, and it was, again, we had a bunch of orphans, people who didn't have families and friends who had stayed behind instead of going home mm-hmm. to their families. Because obviously, a lot of my friends were not native Londoners. Mm. Um, but yeah, we, we got microwave meals from the grocery yeah, no. and that that's what we had when yeah. your roommate is a chef <laughs> yeah, and a genius yeah. Yeah. then you're just like oh my goodness you, you, you yeah it's you a different out. we had a good time we had yeah. a good time we even had like appetizers mm-hmm. yeah so then so, i made a cocktail mm-hmm. and then i just did the cocktail and then the flowers and yeah. then she did everything else yeah. but in the end it was all about like having a meal together with everybody yeah. who's, who's who didn't have Another person there, right? Yes. So that was just kind it's a way of, of opening like, up, no? For yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably and like then, Thanksgiving without the drama. Was it yeah. like one of your yeah. waiters came? Right? Yeah, the wait- Matt, w- Matt right. came. Matt yeah, came. <laughs> Matt came. One of the waiters came, and it was Thanksgiving without the drama. Yeah, and it was kind of like people who wanted to be there wanted to be there, not yeah. because they're forced to be there. Oh, she right. made this like it was Cornish hen. Yeah, we didn't have a turkey. We did like right. the Cornish I hen. I made foie gras shalong bao. Oh my gosh, the <gasps> wow. foie gras shalong bao was so that. good. Yeah, but um, yeah, more in the end, my takeaway from it was it was Thanksgiving, my one day off, and I'm just like I could have just laid down and yes. slept, but. The food memory there was just kind of like making everybody happy, and everyone had family that day, so it was kind of right. Like, yeah, it this really is one what of the most it's memorable. all about. So okay, that okay. was it. We can do a part two of food. I part think. two, but you know, it'd be interesting to hear yeah. about other people's food <coughs> memories and kind of what that means to them, mm-hmm. because I'm sure from childhood, there's always a big there's food always memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and even mm-hmm. when you make your way into the world, like when you first learn to cook and you're first living. Like on your own. That's true. Your first, yeah. Uh, yeah, first milestone to feel almost like an yeah, yeah exactly. I think that learning to really like host either, in our case, host your own party. Or, you know, yes. you're like, yes. oh wow, you're kind of an adult at that point. Yeah, and it it was a little bit of um kind of like sharing your talent, sharing what you have. That my, my when own, when you have it. My only yeah. talent. <laughs> when is you that. have the talent, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Really it's your talent only talent, but, but, but it's a really amazing talent. Yeah, but then yes. it was kind of like nice to have people around and then have people drink and have fun with you. Yeah. So, yeah, happy, those are happy, those happy. are good times. And these are good times too, ladies and gentlemen, because Carla did prepare. <laughs> half of our food tonight and Tanya did the other half which was also very very good Um, and maybe next time you'd like to join us for lunch slash merienda slash dinner and probably midnight snack at the Mm -hmm. rate we're going it'll be a slumber party Mm -hmm. thank you very much again for your time and we hope to catch you next time when we'll talk about something else